Welcome back to the Sixth Year Garage. You all know my 1985 Toyota Extra Cab if you've been a subscriber to the channel for some time. And I've had a few requests to take a look at the inside to see what the interior is like on this truck. So today, we're gonna do that. So this is a DLX model, not the SR5. So it doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles. There are no power options. Everything is manual. It does have bucket seats but it doesn't have the tachometer or really anything else fancy inside. There is one thing that is not original to this truck and that is this, the inclinometer. Now this is actually out of a four wheel drive after sell. When I first got this truck uh, 10 plus years ago, the Toyota inclinometers were still a couple hundred bucks on eBay. I got this for 50 bucks because nobody cared about the four wheel drive for sales back then. Now here we are in 2023, these cars have actually gained a lot of popularity so now these are expensive. But when I bought this, it was dirt cheap, and that's why I didn't have any regrets about cutting it and notching it in the back here to fit over this dash. Now, as you can see, it's in rough shape. I did have it covered um, with some vinyl. It ended up starting to peel, so I took it off and never got back around to recovering it or repainting it. And I did have it stuck down with double-sided uh, Velcro tape here. However, that is given up. So this whole thing needs to be uh, sort of revised to mount onto the dash a little bit better. But of course, I'm not gonna put any holes of any sort in my crack-free dash. One more sort of weird thing about this inclinometer from the Tercel is that instead of the altimeter on the left side like the trucks have, it has a four-wheel drive dummy light. And you'll notice that the front two wheels are in green because normally that vehicle was front-wheel drive. And then when you shift into four-wheel drive, dummy light comes on and the rear wheels light up. So I wired this into my four wheel drive light on the dash and that's how I got that to work. Even though it's not correct for this truck, it's still pretty cool. One other addition I did to this truck is I installed the OEM clock. There used to just be a blank block off plate here and the harness on this truck is already inside so it's just a plug and play addition. I did install an aftermarket radio with a USB on it. And down here we have the twin stick shifter. Now I made a whole video on this setup and how it works and when you'd want to use it. I'll put a link to that down in the description. And over here we have the on off switch for the air pump and the ARB diff lock. Now this says front, but it's actually installed in the rear. And I have a whole other video on this setup and how this works and why you want to use this. Up here in the driver's side visor, it still has the original card to show you where to grease and what type of grease to use and all the joints. One thing it did originally have is air conditioning. However, the previous owner removed the compressor and the lines and all the components, so all I have left is this switch. And this is a 1985, so this was the last year before Toyota started to put the push button for the clutch cancel on the dash. So right now, if you get in and it turns in gear and you turn the key, the truck will jump forward. And down here we have the extra cab specific deck lamp button, which controls the rear deck lamp facing the bed. You know, I've never actually used that. It doesn't light up. And it does not work. I don't mind that the truck has so little options. For me, that's just less complication and less things to break. Even only has the three quarter panel length door panels. I kind of like seeing the uh, exposed matching red paint down there. So let's take a look in the back here. Um, there was originally a jack, which I took out because it's pretty much useless on a truck of this height. I do have my uh, 14 inch drop pitch back here in case I need to tow anything. Got some ratchet straps and a fire extinguisher and a recovery rope, which you can actually see me use that in another video where I used this truck to pull out a Range Rover for my buddy's field. Let's go around to the passenger side. I'll show you a common issue with these trucks. Shifter trim. Yep, mine is also cracked. And when I replace this, I would also like to add the OEM center console to fill in this void. You can see at some point the previous owner had some sort of uh, bracket screwed in here for the fire extinguisher, which I didn't really care for. And if we go around back here, I actually dug out from my parts collection a couple of center consoles. 
Now I got this one first. It's in mint condition. It's not even broken at the hinge. However, it is from a Forerunner. And it wasn't until I got this off eBay that I found out that it doesn't quite match up correctly with the shifter trim for the trucks. So then I got another one on eBay for a truck and it is, as usual, broken at the hinge, very weathered, but it does made up perfect with the shifter trim for these trucks. So eventually I need to get around to restoring this and uh, then I can finally install this. There is, however, a metal bracket that I'll have to weld into the floor of the truck where this attaches to. So aside from that cracked shifter trim and this tear here in the driver's seat, the interior of this truck isn't really plagued with all the common issues that these trucks have, which include, of course, cracked dashes. Uh, these will often fade and get brittle and you can easily put your finger through them. There's no cracks around the exterior of the steering wheel. The plastic, such as the A-pillar and the B-pillar trim on the inside here isn't all brittle and faded and cracked. And I think the thing that really saves this truck is that I don't drive it every day, so I am able to park it inside and keep it out of the sun and out of the heat. I only had the deal to drive the truck for the first two years that I owned it, and it has 197,000 miles on it now. Well, thanks for watching. If there's any other questions on this truck or any of my other vehicles, let me know down in the comments and I'll be glad to answer those in a video. Now, I'm gonna get back to work on fixing this rust.